Blessings and welcome forward to Reasons right here at Literary Life. I'm your host, the great host, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. And we're in the beautiful Mandeville for yet another installation, you know, of this, you know, awesome sharing. This is Brother. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Yes, um, quite an awesome day too, you know, just finished up some shots for, um, you know, a music video that we've been working on. And the track is available on um, my SoundCloud, The Great Owl. And the tracks are free, you know, they're downloadable. And I promised the Lord uh, a while ago, hallelujah, that if I got a medium to express myself, I would give, you know, I would do like free songs, free albums, and just give them away. And this is my first one, by no means um, the greatest, but it's coming from my heart. And um, I worked on it from start to finish with Shrimpy. We'll call Kafar more and, and yourself with the video, so we have to give thanks for all the input, you know, for this one. And leading from such a, you know, that's a kind of a pause there, because that was such a positive note into um, our offering. And um, currently, our offering will be on loneliness and isolation. I suppose you can be lonely and not be isolated. But then, because we're looking at loneliness and isolation, where I suggest maybe your um, isolation or your loneliness cause one or the other. And your isolation cause your loneliness or your loneliness cause your isolation. But what would cause someone is to stop the, <laughs> the double talk. What would really cause someone to be to feel rather? Or to be lonely and isolated. What would be some of the situations with Palaraman that you think would really drive a person to like separate themselves from others and feel like they don't they don't belong? I mean what would what would drive them to such a a path? Yes, so loneliness and isolation. If you focus on lonely, mm -hmm. it's somebody who they just feel like people don't care about them. Mm -hmm. You know, is is a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, and it could be reality as well. You know, people just yeah. don't care about them, so they just feel lonely. Nobody call them. Nobody just don't acknowledge them, you know? Hallelujah. So lonely, you know, no family, not calling them, no none, you know? Mm -hmm. They just don't like them. Them do, well, most of the time, mm -hmm. you know, um, pe people will do people harm and hurt people, mm -hmm. you know? Whether physically or mentally or, you know, verbose, you know? Mm -hmm. It so, hurt them, yeah. so they just don't want to call them, you know? Like enough people vex with them father, and just don't call them, you know? Don't, don't want to see them. That's true. And it make the father be lonely, you know? Nobody don't want to see the father, mm -hmm. you know? And by extension, if, if you're lonely for a long period of time, I guess you're then going to feel isolated as well, too. Because the isolation is a sense that you're alone. Well, in terms of isolation, how miss say isolation is... Mm -hmm. It can be positive in terms of if me want to focus more upon God right now, I'm going to isolate myself. Oh, you're twisting this one, I like this. <laughs> you see me? Yes. I'm not going to be lonely because me want, we're going to be in the presence of God and Him angels. Mm -hmm. There's no loneliness in isolo isolation when you are dealing with God. Mm. You see me? And it's good for evil say, I isolate myself so I can just read the Bible or read, some, read a book mm -hmm. that will help me because through the physical world, the world that we don't know, mm -hmm. sometimes we just need isolation from it. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> yeah, man. All yeah. internet and so. Even when the internet gone this morning, I find myself I do more things, you know? Whoa, internet cool. is such a distraction, you know? It will get you in deep into doing things where you could have been doing more productive things. Ah, uh, absolutely. You see me? So you need to isolate yourself from all Wi-Fi, <laughs> you know, internet, Technology. from the world, you know? And just say, I'm going to just go read a book without no distraction. Put the phone on airplane mode, you know? Mm -hmm. No distraction right now. 
come in on nature like a place over there right now, a nice little garden. Absolutely. Man, and you stick up a book and read. What nicer than that? Yeah. And nobody disturbing your energy. Absolutely. You know? Nobody coming and knock on your door and say, do this, do that, or so. You know? It is a my time now, me and God time, if I so. Peaceful and say, isolation in that. Sometimes case. you just need to just take a time for yourself and just mm -hmm. relax and be at peace and just take a deep breath in the nature and just give thanks to the most high, you know? And then get back in a Babylon <laughs> if what, you have to. It's you know? like it's a balancing act sometimes. Yes, I. And um, I like the way you didn't just automatically made the the loner or the aloneness come out of the loner because you got alone lonely and loner True. right so I, I love the way you never allowed the lonely to come out as the isolation as a definition for isolation because part of being i guess lonely are feeling it's a feeling of being alone, as we already explained that these people think that they're doing things basically by themselves. Whatever the reasons are why they would have been in such a context or such a situation, they feel um, alone. And the loner to me seems like the, it's like where the isolation, naturally chosen isolation comes from. Because if you're a loner, then you would choose to isolate for a reason, meaning you enjoy the experience of your own company and maybe what you do within your own company which is like as you say maybe you study read on the word meditate upon the word of god so therefore in that case a loner under isolation that is beneficial would seem to be in sync but then there's the other angle which is the aloneness and isolation being a negative thing that if we are social beings features of social compunction then it would suggest that we would have to go out and, even within our small, intimate personal environment, have interaction, more than one. And so, not having that aloneness take over your social interaction or your social experience, I think is healthy. Because then if it takes over now, then this loneliness now becomes a isolation in that you don't have to be out there by yourself. You could literally be in a crowd of people and because you're literally not in the favor of the, the, let's just say the people who are the majority of the attitudes pervading around you. And these are, are maintained by dominant groups, whether religious, spiritual, depending on how your society is set up and where you are in your society and your age group. So let's just say they, you're a 25 year old and your peers are ignoring you. That would be the people that you have gone to college with, um, live in the same neighborhood with, or uh, have gone to you know, grades below with, and have separated a little maybe for high school or for college, but you still live in the same area. And in essence, you, you know each other, but the essence of communication between you and these members is like non-existent, though literally we know each other, right? But there is no communication. So it doesn't matter if we were sitting right here, let's say, at a cafe together and 10 of us from the same block or from the same college were there. No one would notice you. That aloneness to loneliness to isolation can lead to psychosis, it can lead to neurosis, it can lead to a lot of, um, you know, social anxiety. True. Because their people feel like they have no place. And in everything, they're alone. That sense of confidence is hard to develop because it's like you need that reinforcement. And it's like nobody's taking your point seriously. As a matter of fact, nobody's even listening to your point. Nobody's even acknowledging that you said something. You know what I mean? And if that continues over a long period of time, and even if it's not personal, let's get it, people. Even if it's not personal, even if it's not like it's a family member or an intimate relation, the fact is, if it's people you gotta interact with and they're doing that with you, after a while, that pattern has set a behavior in you and that's a dysfunctional behavior because if you are the opposite in the sense of well adjusted and people are accepting your, your, your nuances and your bull and whatever as well as your good stuff 
it means that you don't know exactly what, what, what the ceiling is because you're well adjusted, you're accepted, you, 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 you have been given that stamp of approval and sense of belonging. For people who have not been given that, the power that you take for granted to just have a statement be made, be understood or wanting to be understood, to have effective outcomes from your dialogue, you, you might take it for granted because people have always been saying, Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Or, yes, Jay. Yes, John. I understand, miss. I understand, ma'am. <laughs> right? People have always been saying that with you. But there's some people they've never been saying it with. Hallelujah. And if those people are continually ignored, though they are part of the experience, it has an effect upon them. And ultimately, it does have an effect upon you when you have the sociopaths that come up. Because they take advantage of such little cracks within human behavior, there are some, so, so, such little disparities because some people are on the receiving end of a lot of sociopathic behaviors because people see them wanting the attention, needing the approval, you know, wanting to get out of the loneliness and then some sociopaths come into their life and through the narcissism turn them into, you know, like a putty, <laughs> you know, just basically traumatizes them, even worse than they were traumatized before because they were isolated before from society because of whatever and now some sociopath come and mess with them you know mess with their emotion their sense of self and you have a lot of people who get more isolated so I would implore individuals that even though there is this ecstasy in wanting to have the approval of others some of what brother Singh has said is very very applicable that if you use your sense of loner, <laughs> lonerability, not as a vulnerability but as a, a means to draw closer to God Almighty, to the source of being, to spend more time in quietitude so you can learn more and have other experiences that will inspire and increase your sense of self. That would make your seeming isolation more a matter of self-development and growth. And you won't have to then so much depend on the approval of others because then you would have had your own impetus, your own confidence and be able to make your own decision and stand on your own two feet. And that actually is capital because when people see that you're that way, they tend to be like we call in Jamaica, bandwagonists and come around because they see, you know, you're exuding power, <laughs> brother Singh. So, with a priest or the cure, to loneliness mm -hmm. is to know that you're a child of God and God is your best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see me? Hallelujah. God has many titles, you know. Mm -hmm. God is the great judge. Mm -hmm. You see me? The, the, the all that is, the I am. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hallelujah. The great father, mm -hmm. you know. The great light. God is with saviour, mm -hmm. with healer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But you are our best friend as well. Our brethren, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our best friend that. So how can you be lonely? Knowing that God is your best friend. Your best friend. Yeah. Somebody who you feel comfortable with or you cannot share anything with, you know? And your best friend that. So anytime you feel lonely, go talk to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple. Mm -hmm. You know? Why you never know talk to God in the first place? Because we constantly supposed yeah. to talk to our best friend. Yes. And I keep make him keep up with everything and just share thoughts and you know? Every experience because that's what make it so intimate and personal. Your best friend. So yes sir. All the things you wouldn't share with nobody else, you would share with your best friend. Yes sir. Your fears and be reassured that you could overcome them. Yeah man. Can I remember when the 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 apostle he did in the prison man? And him, uh, yeah man, him constantly I talk to God, mm -hmm. <laughs> him not lonely, mm -hmm. him full up in the presence of the Most High, the Most High dead with him on his side 24-7, mm -hmm. him not lonely. So it's cultivating a strong sense of well-being then, I mean people isolate the statement well-being, like maybe it's an aesthetical thing. But it's a psychosomatic and spiritual thing because you have to secure the mind and keep healthy thoughts so your mind will race away with you so that the lonely thoughts could get the better of you 
Because if you have a weak emotional space because of you know, constantly being hurt and you know, being overwhelmed by your vulnerability, then I think it's more likely isolation or loneliness can develop out of a, a state of rejection. Because mm-hmm. that's another thing that causes loneliness. I mean, some people didn't just discount themselves based upon their reasoning or their overstanding. But we'll just flat out reject it. Yes, sir. Because again, sometimes, maybe the experience they've had with those dominant people. Mm-hmm. If you grow up in our culture and, you know, like the Rastaman, a lot of Rastaman's culture deal with a, a lot of isolation. Mm-hmm. You have a postmodernist Rasta who might be flying a private jet or, you know, having a, you know, a million dollar yacht. But the really Rasta man weren't always so much about being in the presence of the world, but not of the world like the modern Rasta would say he's there, but he's not out there. But anyway, but the older Rasta had more of, like, say, ancient paradigm of isolation, like you say, as a way of communing more with God, like seeing that the illusions or the fleetingness of life in the fast paced life to them leads to more loneliness because people would be more caring about things and what they're doing and what they're, they're, how they're doing things and what they're hoping to achieve by what they're doing and the way they're doing it, right? So people more distracted by that in that outer world. So the true spirituality before would have suggested not going towards that because that was too chaotic and go to something that was ordered out of the chaos which is first a state of mind of inclusion, as a state of mind of being in sync with the nature of your creator, like you say, that isolation isn't to heal some kind of wound in you, but to really bring you closer to your creator. So then now when the ancient Rasta was thinking, isolation was like one of their paradigms, come out of Babylon, come out of her being in a circumspect life, you know, and you could put it in a layman's term, it's like this life is simpler and it wasn't dictated by the financial markets or the systems. You know, people are telling you about Bitcoin and they're telling you about all these things that I think sometimes lead to anxiety because when these things disappear and their value just is wiped out, I think people go berserk sometimes and don't have, don't have a grounding to kind of stabilize their mind. So, but the, the ancient mindset, having that strong mind, was to say, Life doesn't only happen the way these money market instruments are designed. These bonds, right? These paper, right? It's not all these gold standards. There was something far deeper when you go through the inner man and connect to the outer cosmos and to the source of being in the cosmos. And that is a high paradigm that spirituality is somewhat losing, but it had before. And it's two paradigms, two sides of, I mean, loneliness and isolation. Because one is a loner, one is alone, and one is isolated. It could be the same, it could also be three. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be three different persons and two different points of the experience in existence. So maybe right now you are alone, and you aren't a loner, but you don't have to allow loneliness to take you over. That is that psychological state becoming a functionality, right? And if you're alone, you don't have to be isolated to the point where you lose connection with the environment and the beings around you. But if you are a loner, and like me in some regards, I am too. I like to choose my own path and execute things in a lot of sense on my own, hallelujah. But being that I am a loner, I also understand the balance of the social experience. So, me and my brethren, Brother Singh, the mystic Kush, Upar, you won't find a whole lot of us, but that is my sense of saying, I know, even though I'm circumspect and I'm very discriminatory in my old choice of company, but I still know I ain't gonna be like isolating myself that much. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be isolating myself, um, you know, so much because I understand now, you know, how to balance it being a loner, but I allowing loneliness and isolation to take me over. And if you are one of the person who have isolated yourself now for a separation 
of the systematic and the spiritual for the edification of the internal logos and the spirit of the God man within you or the God woman within you, then I say to you, blessings, because I understand that, that isolation has garnered within you a deeper vibrating energy and experience. Because all those persons like them say in the presence of holiness, because you know that that energy is clean and that energy is going to you know, just wash you, bathe over you without you saying anything as long as you are receptive and not combative, right? So when you are in that awesomeness of the isolation that is drawing you closer to the most, right? Don't be so caught up in your isolation that you're so heavily minded, you're no earthly good. That means that you say, me not even interested to you know them people over there so I because I'm so high and clean. I'm not talking about in the, in the judgment of it, but just in the way that our isolation can be like, we know the city that we live in is messed up and a lot of stuff is crazy and out of whack. So when these people are saying, I don't want to go where they are, I know what's happening there. They do know to a, day, to a great degree what's happening. And they're making truthful statements, right? But even though they're making truthful statements, within the cities, within the places that they're isolated from, is you and I, our brethren, our sisters, our brothers and sisters, the girls and the women we love. Everybody's not just on that isolated, you know, paradigm as we are. So out there is our brothers and sisters, our friends and our familiars. So be isolated for the edification of your soul. But like Moses, brother, right? Come down from the mountain with the tablets and the law, man. Mm -hmm. And come share some truth with us because we need that, that light. Yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> Tell us things. Yes, sir, and to the people who don't really have friends and so, most likely them self 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 centered. Mm -hmm. You see me? I do self them I talk about. Always when them link up with somebody, a self, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order to create a good relationship with somebody, to make them actually care about you as well. You actually have to care about them. Absolutely. <laughs> you have to care about what they are going through and Hallelujah. kind of focus on them and see what, just listen to them, mm -hmm. you know? Value them like you value yourself or you want to be valued. Share them experience and feel them emotions and, you know? And the person will value you. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, a good friend, you know, you listen to me. You know, him help me out through my bad times, you know. He never said no, you know, them type of and them things that help you to make people care about you by you Absolutely. caring about them. Absolutely. You know? And loving them, you know. Not so isolating yourself into your own feelings. Yes, sir. Because sometimes we're not saying the feelings are are evil. It's just sometimes it's vulnerable feelings mixed with fears and worries and it sometimes makes people don't want to show their true nature or their true self because they're feeling that they're going to be rejected or hurt. And so again, it leads to some isolation or the self-centered um, paradigm. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the most extreme level, I guess it's narcissism, right? At the most extreme level. But a narcissist still needs people to kind of show off their, you know, whatever. But mm -hmm. so it will not fully, wholly be under that sense of loneliness. But in a sense, it does isolate them because I'm, I guess maybe that's why they try so hard to maintain an image to garner power from other individuals because if they, I guess if they were really truly at peace and felt a part of the, 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 the social function I don't think they would have exude such behavior I remember when I wasn't in sync with, with the, the collective I was a bit lonely uh, and I'm saying I am alone now, but I was a bit lonely because it wasn't about me having an independent mind and being comfortable in my own space. It's the fact that I wasn't finding anyone that wanted to connect on that level. I was good, I was a kind and sharing person. It made people be in my space. But like when you really start going to you now, you know that kind of isolation, people kind of just distance themselves from you because like, you're too deep or you're too that. And so I suffered that because maybe, you know, having too much of that, you know, self-ego and drive towards that. But over time, I do recognize that, you know, you have to care more sometimes about the feelings of others in a greater context than you do about your own. It is, it, it is a, 
a practice in reducing your own fears and also your own delusions because sometimes your own delusions is what's isolating you so sometimes it, it makes sense that you prefer another over you at times at very strategic and integral times to allow for your, your deeper sense of self and well-being to develop you know so on the path that we choose and are the path that you choose it's always beautiful you know when you can yeah come out of that little zone what we call it the comfort zone mm -hmm. and sometimes those comfort zones become the isolation zones so we don't want to be isolated by them we want to be able to be whether the alone the loner or the isolated or three in one one in three and yet be at peace right mm -hmm. yeah because ultimately the social existence is communication and interaction. So when you don't do that, it kind of takes away a lot of the value. Because how we speak, that's how we even dress ourselves in colors and tones. That's how we dance, because communication is so vast. The interaction that causes sociability, society, all comes from that social, from that you, me. So when we isolate ourselves, if it's not even for the edification of society, it's of no value because like I say, the great teachers who go to the monasteries and you know, the tabernacles far outside of town and outside of the populous areas, they come forward every so often to teach or they welcome people to the temples, to the monasteries, right? So it's like a balance. Have time by yourself. Get to know yourself by yourself in the presence of yourself and the most high God, of course. Hallelujah. But also, don't be so thick skin, thin skin, whatever, whichever way, however way you see it, that you don't connect with others, care about others, and try to increase the communication between yourself and others. Before we segue forward into another moment, brother Singh, anything you want to leave us on, on the essence of loneliness? and isolation. I remember Christ. Christ tried with a couple people well. <laughs> you know? But same time, when him there for go up on him, him wilderness journey and fasting Hallelujah. journey, he must have chat by himself. Mm -hmm. So you have to know the balance in between. You know? Hallelujah. Absolutely. It's a good point to which we can segue. Life is about striking that perfect harmony. If the Lord had made everything just complete with instruction manual and everything, part of us would be bored the first weekend we read everything and tried out all of our abilities and our thoughts. The beauty is life is an unfolding discovery. Brother, I look at isolation helps them sometimes. I look at loneliness helps the whole away. It never kills away. But if you do too much of it, It'll make you into like a Unabomber, a psychopath that write dead letters and post um, a man of cryptic, crazy messages, a person that will hack into people's network and spy on people. Or even spy on people making love. You got a lot of crazy people out there, people. So just remember, before your mind gets out of control, get it in control by just relaxing and not be carried away so much with all of the fears and whatever. And remember the most I got. Above all things, you don't need a lock and key to access God and you certainly don't need the approval, hallelujah, of others to access God. That's, that's the most important. So, like Raman Singh said, if you have no other friend, what a friend you have in Jesus. <laughs> so, what a friend you have in, your most high, in the Most High God. I'm sure that no other earthly friend could, have, could ever come to you. So, until next time, giving thanks to the uncomparable nature of love in the spirit of the I am within each and every one of you being loner, alone, isolated, or venerated. Love, joy, and blessings to you. Continue to like, share, subscribe. Tree Alive Television Network, Fila Media, here on YouTube, support um, Jamaica Liberty Farms, right? And um, Good Food and Tours Jamaica, that is um, Brother Raman Singh's channel and his wife's channel. Yeah, and obviously you don't know um, Jerome Sage Waller on Instagram, Astral Gods for the Mystic Bob. Yeah, so keep up the trail life experience, keep supporting me. 
and get out of your box of isolation because you're awesome gift to yourself, to us. If you're listening to us, you actually listen and you respond. So continue to be this awesome gift, this blessing, this love, this God. In Jesus' name I pray. Until next time. Perfect love. Perfect love, brother. Perfect love.